Good evening, fellow Plexers and Colin. So instead of mocking up a dummy file, I just thought I'd try to find the actual concert you're talking about. So I already have it renamed in the most basic format, Peter Frampton Live in Detroit 2013, because that matches the TMDB entry. But it arrived with a 1999 year. So let's do this. Let's change this back to 1999. Now I run everything through FileBot. So let me open that up in FileBot. FileBot opened off screen. And I'll run my default movie expression on it. It's going to add media characteristics. The FileBot knows that it's got a match, but it's not sure of the match, and it's suggesting this that we already know is what's in the movie database. All right, so my expression is going to create structure. So it's going to create um, the proper name with 2013 with a source ID in both the folder and the file name, and I don't need to do it in the file name, I just do it for the heck of it. So I'll rename, we'll clear the colon out of both of those, continue. Let me refresh this. So this is what we end up with. Let me get rid of it here, and I will paste it in my concert library. And now let's bring Plex over the web app. I'm already in the concert library, so I'll refresh it by scanning the library. And this concert added properly. The metadata tells it it's a 1999 concert, and it just happens to have a release year of 2013. So all my media uses the same format. Um, I throw in the source ID and then I also throw that into the file name. Again, that's an extra step that's probably not needed. And now this is an older file. All of Plex's um, support documents for movies shows versioning using the space dash space, and then you can keep different copies of the same file. So if I, let's see, if I rename it, I copy everything, and let me just grab something from some place that doesn't make much of a difference what it is. Give me a second. Um, let me do this. Paste this in. All right, I have a minute left for this to copy in. Wish I had a smaller file. Let me pause this so we don't have a lot of dead here. This file over. I don't know why I haven't added it to my library. There must be an issue with it. So, how Plex says to do versioning with movies is like this. Everything before the space dash space is the same. And then you can add whatever you want afterwards. Well, I, I do things a little bit different. Let me go back up to this. The naming guide for a Plex TV show series tells us we can put anything we want ignored into brackets. And the TV show library doesn't really have versioning. That's one of the problems with it. 
Well, you could do versioning for episodes, but they don't really talk about it. So I've incorporated that versioning thing here by just using the brackets like the TV show library says to do with the expectation that eventually the same rule will probably be applied for a movie library too. So I could have two copies of this same thing by doing that. So let me get rid of that. And that's about it, Colin. I've had good luck with my FileBot expressions. And I'm not sure if you've ever used FileBot. Before I end the video, let me show you what I'm using. Again, it opened off screen. Let me edit my preset. Now I have four expressions. One named from TMDB with structure. One only renames without the structure. And then another expression named to IMDB. There is a tiny percentage of movies that are only listed at IMDB and not TMDB. So if I have to, I'll switch to that. And then IMDB with just the structure also. All right, so. And I'm not sure if I copied all that. Let me do it this way. Control C. Let me open up the word processor. Paste that in. Let's change the color of the text. And let's get it bigger. Okay, so N and the Y is the year. And then this is how you add the source ID. And then again, the name of the year, N of the year, and then the source ID again. So if you didn't want the source ID, you could take this part out. This looks for common keywords in the original file name to add an addition tag. So if the original folder or file name had unrated, director's cut. Um, what are some other ones? All the normal ones like that, it will pick it up. I use the addition tag manually to mark colorized movies or 4K movies in my 4K library. If you rerun FileBot on those uncommon additions, you'll wipe the addition tag out. So that's kind of a special thing. So then I insert a space dash space and I put my extra information into brackets. The video format, video codec, audio format, audio codec. And then the, um, the developer of FileBot helped me write this expression. This looks inside the media container file for unlabeled or English labeled subtitles and it, display, it displays either ENG sub or undescribed sub and adds that to the file name um, in brackets of course. And then this last part um, tells FileBot to look inside any subtitle file, an SRT subtitle file, to look at the language and apply the language code automatically. Unfortunately I don't think there's any way to have FileBot um, automatically discover whether you have a forced subtitle versus a default one or a um, hearing impaired subtitle. I, I wish FileBot could do that too. So that's my expression. And you simply create a new expression and you set your data source to the movie database and all the rest of these fields are default and you just paste in that expression. Now FileBot does have its own default expression. If you hold down the shift key, if, if you add your own expressions, you have to hold down the shift key. If you don't, you can just click here and see FileBot ex, FileBot's expressions. So organized movies for Plex will do it similarly. Let's, let's actually bring something up. Um, this won't work, of course, because the structure has to already exist on my Synology NAS, but this would work locally. 
So if I hold down the shift key and I choose organize movies for Plex, FileBot's going to create structure, but it's going to create structure in a media folder called movies, capital M, I'm sorry, in media, capital M, and then a subfolder of movies. And FileBot doesn't have the permission needed to create that structure on my Synology NAS, but it would create that structure on a local hard drive off my computer. So, very similar, except it's putting a dash in instead of a, a colon. It replaces the colon after Frampton with a space dash space, kind of like Sonar does. Mine just eliminates the colon, and that works great for me. So it's everything else is the same, live in Detroit, the same source ID, and then just a simple file name. I like my expression better. It does more. All right, so let me know what you think about this, but this movie added perfectly fine on my server with my naming convention, which is why I'm always pushing FileBot lots of times in these issues.